Hi, hello there. Welcome to supporting the power system and troubleshooting computers. For the objectives of this video lecture, at the end of this video lecture, you should be able to describe the methods and devices for keeping a system cool. Select a power supply to meet the power needs of your computer system. Demonstrate an organized approach to solving any computer problem especially hardware problems occurring during the boot and troubleshoot problems with electrical system. Also, you need to troubleshoot problems with the motherboard, processor, and RAM. Troubleshoot hardware problems with mobile devices. Computer cooling systems. Now, what are the different cooling methods and devices used in our computer systems to keep the temperature within the acceptable level? If a processor, expansion cards, and other components overheat, the system can get unstable. Components can fail or be damaged. Now, devices used to cool a system, it uses case fans, Okay, coolers, heat sinks, and some other computers uses the liquid cooling system. Now, processor coolers, fans, and heat sinks. So, computer systems use a cooling assembly designed for a specific processor. That is to keep the temperature below the maximum temperature. A good processor coolers maintains a temperature of 90 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit or that is something like around 32 to 43 degrees Celsius. It uses a cooler which sits on top of the processor. This cooler basically consists of fan and heat sink. So cooler is an assembly of fan and heat sinks. Heat sink is a metal component. It uses fins that draw heat away from the processor. And the purpose of the fan, which is seated on top of the heatsink, is to blow and drone heat away from the CPU unit. So basically, in the computer systems, the basic cooling system would be the use of coolers. Again, it comprises of the heatsink and a fan. Not just the CPU, some components also have their own cooling system like the display adapter. Now, this is how it looks like. So basically, you've got here an aluminum or metal uh, chassis for our heatsink. And on top of it, mounted is our fan. Now, at the bottom part of our heatsink, basically, we have there a contact or a, an area on the CPU. Okay, makes contact with this um, component of the heatsink it should be properly seated on top of the cpu as what i said earlier this cooler is made up of aluminum copper or combination of both so it is bracketed to the motherboard using a wire or plastic clip so a cream like thermal compound eliminates air packets helping to draw heat off the processor so the thermal compound is applied on this area of the heatsink. It ensures it has a proper contact with the CPU. Now the cooler gets power by using a four pin fan header on the motherboard. This fan is one of the component inside the system unit, which uses 12 volts power coming from the power supply unit. We also have a fanless CPU cooler we call it passive CPU cooler, which contains heat pipes, okay, which also contains liquid that becomes vapor when heated. So vapor draws heat away from the CPU. For the case fans, as defined earlier, it helps draw air out of the case to prevent overheating. So aside from the fan mounted on top of the heatsink, there are also auxiliary fans 
mounted on your computer chassis. In most cases, it is positioned on the rear part of the system unit, just below the power supply unit, or some cases or chassis has this fan on the side of the system unit. Large fans tend to perform better than smaller fans. Other fans that we have also inside the system unit are being utilized by the display adapter or graphics video. Fan cards can be mounted next to graphics card. So be sure to select a fan card that fits the expansion slot you plan to use. Also, some of the uh, heat sinks, okay, instead of using fan, it is connected to a liquid cooling system, which has the same purpose of the, uh, as the fans to eliminate heat away from the component. So other fans or cooling systems available inside the system unit, aside from the CPU, the display adapter, you also have the chipsets some chipsets has their own cooling system we also have the ram cooler so this is shown here clips over a dim memory module may be powered by sara or a four pin molex power connector directly connected to the power supply now for the liquid cooling systems there is a small pump sits inside the case and tubes moves liquid around components and then away from them to place where fans cool the liquid sort of there is a radiator okay act as radiator inside our system unit selecting power supply power supply is one of the components of the computer's cooling system now, what are the factors or considerations that we can use in selecting a power supply? So before that, what are the reasons why we need to replace a power supply? First, a power supply in the existing system fails. Second, a power supply in the existing system might not be adequate. Now, when building a computer from the scratch, some cases come with the power supply already installed and that power supply might use 300 watts to 400 watts power rating now if you are using or building a computer from the scratch and you want it to be a gaming pc that power supply is not enough so you have to change that power supply based on the needs of the components that you're planning to add on your gaming pc Types and characteristics of power supply. So important power supply features that you might want to consider would be the form factor. The form factor determines the power supply size. From the previous video, we've talked about form factors. And this form factors applies to the power supply, the chassis, and the motherboard. So there should be compatibility among these three components. Another consideration is the power rating. The higher the power rating, the better. So that means if the power supply has the higher rating, you can connect more components or accessories onto your computer systems. You might want to add some fans, some lighting effects, okay, and other accessories. Next would be the number and type of connectors. Fans inside the CPU should also be considered in selecting the power supply. Also, the fans inside the power supply unit. So take note that fans is part also of the cooling system. So it draws heat away from the component. Also, another consideration is the dual voltage options. So dual voltage means the power supply can operate on either 110 volts or 220 volts warranty and overall quality is also another consideration 
how to calculate wattage capacity of a power supply. Now, determining the wattage capacity, you have to consider all the components inside the chassis. So consider the number of USB ports and firewire devices because these ports get power from the port connected to the motherboard. Also, points to keep in mind, video card draws most of the power in a computer system. So the power supply should be rated 30% higher than expected needs. Well, in my case, I'll double it. So what size power supply do we need? So ideally, add up wattage requirements and add 30%. That's what I'm saying. I usually double that when I'm building my gaming PC. So how to calculate wattage capacity? So these are the approximate wattage consumption of the devices inside the chassis. So the motherboard, processor, memory, keyboard, and mouse. So approximate wattage would be from 200 to 300 watts. So for each of the fan, it uses 5 watts. SATA hard drive, 15 to 30 watts. DVD or CD drive, 20 to 30 watts. PCI video card, 50 watts. Okay, and others. So you just have to sum up this approximate wattage. You have to do some inventory of the components available on your computer systems and do the arithmetic. So once you have summed up all this approximate wattage, then you might want to have a tolerance of 30. Well, again, for me, I doubled it. So it's up to you. Hardware problem. How to approach a hardware problem? So we have to look at some of the troubleshooting resources. Usually, we are using the internet to look for solution to our problem. So next is chat forums or technical support or email technical support. Also, you can look on the manufacturer's diagnostic software, user manuals, and technical associates in your organization. Or call a friend. Okay, So you might want to call someone to help you solve the problem. Now, what are the steps or procedures how we solve computer problems? So there are some questions that you could ask during the interview to the user. So the first step is to perform a triage. Triage means we have to conduct an interview with the end user. And you might want to ask the following questions. First, you could ask, can you describe the problem? When did it first start? And when does it occur? Okay. Second, was the computer recently moved? Was any hardware or software recently added or installed? Was any software recently reconfigured or upgraded? Or did someone else use this computer recently? So these are just some of the questions for you to get information about the problem and about the component. Also, you might want to ask, does the computer have a history of similar problems? It might be something like intermittent, okay, or this problem has encountered before, so you might want to consider such. Is there important data on drive that is not backed up? That is very important. Before you do anything on a computer system, you have to ensure that you have backed up the data. Can you show me how to reproduce the problem? Okay, so you ask the end users, can you demonstrate or can you redo the problem? Or can you reproduce the problem? Observe. So after gathering information, you have to prioritize what to do and begin diagnosing and addressing the problem. Again, it is very important to perform step one. We have to ask the user. Step two, backup data as needed. So three options for backing up data. First, move the hard drive to another system. 
or you can use a file recovery software. Or you might want to hire a professional file recovery service. Before selecting a service, read reviews, understand the warranty and guarantees, and get consumer recommendation. Again, before you perform any disassembly on a computer, before you remove any components inside, okay, before you touch and repair any of these computer components, you have to ensure and ask first, is this still under warranty? Third is examine the system and establish theory. Okay, so this diagram here will help you establish theory, okay, and solve the problem. Next, you might want also to consider listening to the beep codes. Okay, so beeps during the power on self test has something to say. Something like if you have heard of a one short beep or no beep. Okay, the computer passed all POSD tests. Okay, one long and two short beeps. Well, it would totally depend on the type of BIOS you are using. If you are using an award BIOS, there is a video problem or no video card there or bad video memory. If it is an Intel BIOS, it is a video problem. So when you're listening to this beep codes, make sure you have to identify the type of BIOS being used by the computer. Continuous short beeps, it's a memory error. One long and one short beep, it's a motherboard problem. Okay? So three long beeps, keyboard controller problem. So you might want to listen to these beeps. And if you are not familiar with these codes, then go ahead and try search it on the internet. Steps 4, 5, and 6. So fix the problem, verify the fix, and document the outcome. After understanding the problem, so plan steps to resolve the problem. After the fix, verify the system works by performing one last hard boot and making sure everything works as expected. So ask if anything could have been done to prevent the problem. If so, take preventive action. So most organizations require documentation in call tracking or help desk application. Record findings. Now what is the purpose of documenting the outcome? So if you have encountered the same problem, okay, so you already have the reference on what to do and how to solve the problem. That's the essence of documenting the outcome or documenting the solutions made on the problem. Troubleshooting electrical systems. Special concerns when troubleshooting mobile device hardware. So there are also factors to consider before starting a repair project. So number one is you have to look on the warranty. You have to ensure that if the device is still under warranty, well, bring it to the nearest service center. Okay. Now, if it is out of warranty, then that's the time you can do the repair. Next is time the repair will take and alternatives to repair, upgrading. So return notebook to manufacturer or service center. So substitute external component for internal device or replace the internal device. So electrical problems can occur before or after the boot. Okay, so it could be consistent or intermittent. Intermittent means sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's operational, sometimes it's not. Okay? So, possible symptoms of an electrical problem. So, computer appears to be dead. Okay? If it is a dead system, no response from the system, okay? No indications of life, well, that is considered to be a dead system or dead computer system. And... More likely, the problem is on the electrical. Okay? So, next would be, computers sometimes lock up during booting. Error codes or beeps occur during booting. 
smell burnt parts or odors, computer powers down at unexpected times. Computer appears dead except you hear a whining coming from the power supply. Okay, so these are some of the symptoms that you might want to look at and this would lead to an electrical problem. Now, we have to try the simple things first. So, if you small any burnt component, don't turn on the system. Find fried part and replace it. Okay? So, you have to use the sense of smell in here. Now, if power supply is whining, don't turn the system on. Open the case and look for short or consider upgrading. Test the power supply with the power supply tester. Each cable of the power supply should have an appropriate voltage. Okay, so it, it should have a measured value within the desired uh, level. Check power cord connection and power bar it may be plugged into. Is the power outlet controlled by a wall switch? If so, turn it on. Are any cable connections loose? So you have to check those. Okay. What else? Is the circuit breaker blown? Or is the house circuit overloaded? Are all switches on the system turned on? Or is it possible the system has overheated? If so, wait a while and try again. All their computers might be affected by electromagnetic interference or EMI. So check for sources of EMI such as the fluorescent lighting or the electric fan or copier sitting near the PC. Now, if problem still not solved, you have to look inside the chassis. So check all the power connections from the power supply to the motherboard and drives. Again, if you smell burnt components, search for shorts and frayed and burnt wires. If you suspect the power supply is bad, test it with a power supply tester. Again, there should be proper reading for every cable on the power supply. Problems that come and go. So generally, intermittent problems are more difficult to solve. Sometimes you will encounter this. Sometimes there is no indication of that problem. That is what you call intermittent. Symptoms of what may be intermittent problems. So computer stops and hangs for no reason. Memory errors appear intermittently. Data is written incorrectly to the hard drives. Keyboard stops working at odd times. Motherboard fails or is damaged. Power supply overheats and becomes too hot to touch and power supply fan whines and becomes noisy. So what are we going to do with it? So eliminate the electrical system as the source of an intermittent problem. So consider the power supply is inadequate, suspect the power supply is faulty, and the power supply fan might not work. Power problems with the motherboard. Short might occur if motherboard components makes improper contact with the chassis. That is why we are using standoffs okay, or spacer to have some space and to keep your motherboard away from the metal components. So it can seriously damage the motherboard. So you have to check for the missing or loose standoff or loose screws. Shorts in the motherboard circuits might also cause problems. So look for damage on the bottom of the motherboard. Look for the burnt out capacitors that are spotted brown or corroded. Problems with overheating and laptop power systems. So first, we have to know the symptoms of overheating. So these are system hangs or freezes at odd times or after the boot starts. Or maybe you might have encountered the Windows BSOD. BSOD is blue screen of death. 
So this is an error which occurs during the boot. So you cannot hear a fan running or the fan makes a whining sound. You cannot feel air being pulled into or out of the chassis. So what you can do is you can purchase a temperature sensor that will sound an alarm when the inside of the chassis is too hot. So things to do to solve overheating. So if the system hangs, go to UEFI BIOS setup and find the CPU screen that reports the temperature. It should not exceed the recommended temperature. So use compressed air, blower, or anti-static vacuum to remove dust from the power supply and vents. So check airflow inside the chassis. You can also install extra fans in case you need to. Okay. So can the side of the chassis hold a chassis air guide that guides air to the processor? If so, you can also install one. Now I have here a motherboard with the heatsink assembly or the coolers. So if you will look at it closely, we already have accumulated dusts on the assembly. So this would cause overheating on a computer system. So what you can do is get a blower and remove this accumulated dusts from the heatsink and on the fan. Also, you might want to check the fans inside the chassis. So make sure these fans are operational. So if there is also an accumulated dust, you might want to clean and remove those. Things to do to solve overheating. Well, you can also do improve airflow inside the chassis, replace missing face plates and expansion slot covers, ensure cables are not in the way of the airflow. So you have to organize your cables inside the chassis. Place case so that there are few inches of space on both sides of the top of the case. So verify the cooler is connected properly to the processor. Okay. So after closing the case, leave system off for at least 30 minutes. For optimum airflow, so don't leave empty expansion slots and base uncovered like what you see here. Okay, so we have to close this. So if you already have missed the cover, you can use any metal or plastic materials to cover this. And also use tape, okay, masking tape to cover this. Next is you have to organize the cable inside the chassis. Okay, so use cable ties to hold cables out of the way of fans and airflow. Check the UEFI BIOS setup to see if the processor is being overclocked. Overclocking the CPU is not recommended, but in some instances, so especially the gamers, they overclock their processor and overclocking the processor generates more heat next would be you have too many peripherals inside the chassis so try to leave an empty slots between each card okay or if you don't want to do that you might want to have some additional funds inside the chassis flash uafi or bios to update firmware on the motherboard and replace thermal compound if it has hardened so there is a recommended airflow okay for every chassis okay so good arrangement for proper airflow so from the front bends okay so going to the cpu and then the power supply also, you should have here an additional exhaust fan. Okay. Other chassis has an exhaust fan also on the side. Okay. So you have to ensure that 
your chassis or your computer system unit is properly ventilated. Okay, so what are the problems with overheating? So use a power supply that has vents at the bottom and front for better ventilation. Okay, so like what you see here. So inside the power supply unit, so basically some of this PSU has a fan, okay, pushing the air out of the chassis of the power supply. And then you have here a fan, okay, pulling it out and then forward it at the outside the case. Okay, so again, there should be proper ventilation within the chassis. And you have to follow the airflow, okay, for the specific chassis. Next, problems with overheating. Okay. All right. So, um, an intake fan on the front of the chassis might help pull air into the chassis. So check with processor and case manufacturers for specific instructions as to the replacement of fans and what type of fan and heatsink to use. Intel and AMD recommended a chassis air guide as part of the case design. So a round air duct that helps pull and direct fresh air from outside the chassis to the cooler and processor. In some of the computer shops, okay, if you have been there on a gaming shop, they keep their chassis open. Okay, so that's one way to keep the components inside cool. Problems with laptop power systems. So laptop power sources, AC adapter or battery pack. Today's battery is just lithium ion technology. Auto switching AC adapter feature, something like an auto volt. Okay, so device automatically switches from 110 volts or 220 volts AC power. Some laptops use two batteries. The second battery is known as a sheet battery. If power is not getting to the system or battery indicator light is lit, so verify the AC adapter is plugged into the outlet. So check if AC adapter's plug is secure. Check connections on both sides of the AC adapter transformer. And check connection at notebook. So if battery is not charging when AC adapter is plugged in, problem might be with the battery or the motherboard. Troubleshooting the motherboard processor RAM and mobile devices. Symptoms that a motherboard processor or memory is failing. So system begins to boot, but then powers down. There are error messages displayed during the boot process. System reports less memory than installed. So you have to check that out. Because some of the memory might not be properly seated on the bank. System becomes unstable hangs or freezes intermittent windows or hard drive error occurs so components on the motherboard or devices connected to it don't work so check simple things first so you might want to follow these steps to find the source problem so first search the internet for the error message second run an antivirus software to check for viruses. A memory module might be failing, so you can use a memory diagnostic tool to test the memory. Check for potential hardware problems using Device Manager. Download and install any Windows updates or patches. If problem began after a change or new install, uninstall device or application. Use system windows to find out how much RAM is installed. 
So consider upgrading if not enough. Check UEFI or BIOS setup to ensure proper settings. Disable any quick booting features in the BIOS. Then look for errors reported during the boot or during the POST or power on self test. Flash BIOS to update firmware on the board. Check CD that came with a motherboard have some diagnostics. And then update all drivers of the motherboard components that are not working. If an onboard port is not working, you have to verify the problem. Okay. Go into the UAFI BIOS setup and verify the port is enabled. Check the device manager and verify Windows recognizes port with no errors. Update motherboard drivers for this port from the manufacturer's website. Use a loopback plug to test the port. And disable the port in the BIOS setup and install an expansion card. Suspect the problem is failing hard drive. Suspect the problem is caused by overheating. Verify an installed processor is supported by the motherboard. For Windows 8, many continuous restart errors can be solved by performing startup repair process. For older versions of Windows like Windows 7 or Vista, error message disappears before they can be read as the system reboots. So you have to disable automatic restarts by using the advanced boot options menu. So that is pressing F8 as Windows starts. If you have checked Windows and UEFI BIOS settings and have not identified the source of the problem, open the chassis and check inside. So with the case open, so you have to follow these steps. Check that all power and data cables are securely connected. Look for physical damage on the motherboard. Reduce the system to essentials. Try using power on self-test diagnostic card. Suspect the problem is caused by failing power supply. Exchange the processor. Exchange the motherboard. Now, before you do this, measure the voltage output of the power supply or replace it in case it damaged the motherboard. Troubleshooting mobile devices. Solutions for a cell phone that is overheating. So check if heat is coming from the bottom of the cell phone where battery is located. Use different AC adapter to charge the battery. Examine battery for damage if no longer under warranty. If heat is coming from the other areas of the phone, there might be too many apps open. Follow troubleshooting steps for phone's OS. So phone processor might be overworked, allow it to cool, and remove phone from the case. So other problems and solutions, so for frozen system, for iPhone or iPad, reset the device. For Android device, reboot the system by following the manufacturer's direction for a reboot. For Windows phone, hold on the power button and then swipe slide down to power it off. Battery charge lasts short time, so try exchanging the AC adapter. If it doesn't work, exchange battery unless device is under warranty. Again, always consider the warranty first. When installing apps that don't load or load slowly, a hot or failing battery might be the problem. For slow performance, close apps you're not using, clean Android cache data, and disable live wallpapers. If device is unable to decrypt email, may need to generate a new public key and private key and distribute your new public key to those who sent encrypted email. Now let us summarize what we had just discussed. Devices used to keep a processor and system cool include CPU coolers, fans, heat sinks, and liquid cooling. Liquid cooling system use liquids pumped through the system to keep it cool. 
Important features of a power supply to consider when purchasing it are form factor, wattage capacity, number and type of connectors, fan size, support dual video cards, and warranty. To decide on the wattage capacity of the power supply, add up the wattage requirements for all the components and add 30%. Always begin troubleshooting by interviewing the user. When troubleshooting, check the simple things first. Decide if problem occurs before or after a successful boot and if it is caused by hardware or software. When troubleshooting mobile devices, consider warranty and that replacing a component might cost more than replacing the device. Listen for spinning fans or drives and look for indicator lights to ensure a system is getting power. Use a power supply tester to test the power supply. Intermittent problems that come and go are the most difficult to solve. Removing dust from the system, providing for proper ventilation, and installing extra fans can help keep a system from overheating. The battery and DC jack are considered field replaceable units in a laptop that pertains to the power system. Use a multimeter to check the voltage output of an AC adapter. UEFI BIOS gives beep codes when a POSD error occurs during the boot before it tests video. Error messages on a black screen during the boot are usually put there by startup UEFI BIOS during the POSD. An unstable system that freezes or hangs at odd times can be caused by faulty power supply, RAM, hard drive, motherboard, processor, Windows error, or overheating. A POSD diagnostic card can troubleshoot problems with the motherboard. A mobile device battery that overheats or quickly loses its charge might need replacing, but first, try replacing the AC adapter. For a frozen system, try resetting an iPhone or iPad, rebooting an Android device, or resetting a Windows phone. That's the end of this video lecture. Have a great day. See you on the next video.